Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. We continue course which is called Math Plus and Problems, presented on Unizor.com. Now, this is about solving problems, uh, and what's important is these are not your usual problems which you might actually um, solve in schools, um, where those problems are usually just to illustrate certain theoretical concepts. Now, the problems presented in this particular course are not of that kind. These problems need, need thinking. To solve these problems, it's not just applying certain ready-to-use algorithm or formula or something else which somebody gives you and you just apply this formula or algorithm and you come with some kind of an answer. Now, these are unusual problems in the respect that you have to really think about how to solve them. Nobody told you how to solve, how to approach even these problems. Well, unless I put some hint, maybe, in the textual description of uh, these problems. Now, all the problems um, on the website, well, actually all the lectures on, the web on this website, um, are presented together with textual uh, part, notes, um, parallel, the video and the notes on the same screen. And, um, well, the notes are basically like a textbook. Now, as far as the problem solving, sometimes I put solutions, sometimes I put just a hint or an answer to the problem. During the lecture, I usually present the problem and the solution. So, if you are listening to this lecture first, before you're reading the notes, um, I suggest you to pause the video immediately after I present the problem and, s and try to solve it yourself. It's very important. The whole purpose of this course, Math Plus and Problems, is for you to think independently first, before you uh, mm, reading or listening to or watching solution to these problems. Okay, now today we will solve a few geometric problems and there are others. Now I have to mention that uh, there is a prerequisite course for this. It's called Mass for Teens, presented on the same website. Now all the courses, including this and its prerequisite, the Mass for Teens, including Physics for Teens and Relativity for All, all these courses are totally free. There are no advertisement, no strings attached. Signing on, uh, signing in is optional. So basically, you just consume as much knowledge as you want. We share the knowledge. Okay. So the problems are: I have one, two, three problems. The problem number one is related to a well, relatively known fact that the um, geometric average between two positive um, real numbers is always less than or equal to their arithmetic average. So this is geometric, this is arithmetic averages. And this is a known um, equation. Now, why is this particular equation? Algebraically, it can be very easily proven because you have to a minus b square is greater or equal to zero because it's a square, right? a and b are uh, let's say it's positive um, uh, real numbers, which means um, that uh, a square minus 2ab plus b square greater than equal to um, uh, 0, which means um, I will add 4, so a square plus 2ab plus b square uh, greater or equal to 4ab, right? Now, this is a plus b square, and this is 2 square root of ab square. Both are positive, so I do the square root from both, and a plus b is greater than equal to 2 square root of ab, and 2 can be brought here, and you have exactly this, okay? So this is algebraic uh, proof, which is fine, but I would like to, uh, to prove it geometrically. And that's very interesting, actually. If you can just bring together two seemingly unrelated things, 
Um, well, personally, I think it's just kind of a beautiful thing in mathematics. If you see that the same thing can be approached from can be approached from two absolutely different directions, I think it's a very interesting point. So here is the point. Okay, you have a circle and diameter. Take any point and do this. Okay, so this is perpendicular. This is point P, this is point Q, this is center of the circle. Now, let's consider this point dividing the whole um, diameter in two parts, A and B. So, A plus B divided by 2 is equal to what? Well, that's the whole diameter divided by 2 is a radius. So it's basically radius. PO. PO. Right? Okay. Now I would like to prove that PQ is square root of A times B. How can I do that? All right. Well, let's say <coughs> uh, let's say this is equal to C PQ C ok, now consider triangle P Q N which is the right triangle because this is a right angle and triangle P M N which is also right triangle because this angle is uh, supported by by diameter half of the circle so this is 90 degree but they have a common angle right so again p q n and p m n are two right triangles with the same angle which means the uh, all angles are the same which means triangles are similar. From similarity of these triangles there are some proportionality of the uh, of the sides. But now consider yet another triangle PMQ and the same PMN. Again this angle is the same in both, right? Again, P, M, Q, and P, M, N. Both are right triangles, and they have the same angle, so again, they are similar. So, but my point is that triangle P, M, Q is similar to the big one, and this one is similar to the big one. So all angles are equal between the small one and the big, and the medium one and the big, which means small and the medium are also similar to each other because they have the same angles. Now let's just express the similarity in proportionality of the uh, of the sides. Now small catetus A is divided by small catetus of this medium triangle, which is C is equal to a bigger catetus, which is in a small triangle, which is C, divided to a bigger catetus in the medium triangle, B, from which, as you see, C squared is equal to AB, and C is equal to square root of A times B. But now, let's just think about it. This is R. PO, this is R. PQ is C, which is square root, and radius is arithmetic. Radius is a hypotenuse of this triangle, P, PQO. And uh, PQ is the uh, catetus. Hypotenuse is always greater than the catetus. Uh, so perpendicular is always the shortest distance between the point and 
the uh, any other point on the on, on the on the line. This is perpendicular, so this is the shortest distance, much shorter than this one, which basically means that C is less than radius. C is square root of AB. Well, in case P would be in, in this position, radius and um, uh, and, uh, and this particular uh, PQ would be, if P is here, then O and Q are coinciding, in which case A and B are equal. So in case A and B are equal, you, you will have equality. In all other cases, you will have that the C is, is less than or equal to is less than or equal to R, and that's why C is square root of AB. It's less than R, which is uh, A plus B over two over two. Geometric average is less than or equal to. Um, uh, arithmetic average and equality only if A and B are equal to each other, which means Q and O coincide and P is also P O is also a radius. All right, so that's the first problem. Next, next is. I would like to prove something which is very obvious. If you have a triangle and the median CM is median and angle C bisector, which means these two angles are equal to each other. We have to prove that this is isosceles triangle, which means CA is equal to CB. Well, let's think about it very simply. Now, since uh, CM is a median, median M is middle point between these two. So these two segments are equal to each other. Now, this is a common side between these two triangles, CMA and CMB. Now, these angles are the same because it's angle bisector, because it's also not only the median, but also an angle bisector. So what do we have right now? We have two sides and an angle. Isn't that sufficient to say that the triangles are equal um, and uh, therefore CA is equal to CB? Absolutely not. Now, there is a problem with uh, in, in the same course, uh, I think it's uh, uh, geometry zero one. So it's in the same course, which is basically about this particular case. Um, I, I was asking in that particular problem, is it possible to have um, two sides and all angles of one triangle to be equal to two sides and all angles of another triangle? But triangles are not equal to each other, not congruent to each other. And the answer is yes. Why? Because this angle is not in between these two lines, two sides which are equal. The theorem, which is proven in the, uh, in, in the regular course of geometry uh, about triangles, about congruency of triangles, equality of triangles, is that if two sides and angle between them are correspondingly equal to two sides and angle between them of another triangle, then triangles are congruent. Now, this angle is not between these two, and that's sufficient, basically, in some cases, to have triangles totally different. I mean, they are similar to each other because uh, angles are the same, but not equal to each other. One would be bigger than another, so to speak. And again, the problem geometry 0, 1 in the same course exemplifies this particular case. So this is not a good way to prove whatever, what, what I'm going to prove. We need to uh, uh, find somehow a different proof. So 
Now it's good time for you to basically pause the video and think about it yourself. And I will present a solution here. By the way, it's a solution. doesn't mean it's the only solution. There are probably other cases and other ways to prove this. But I prove it this way. So let's do it this way. Let's uh, expand the CM, continue it beyond point M to point Z on the same distance. So CM is equal to MZ. This is equal to this. Okay? And connect it. So what do we have right now? Right now, these two angles, this one and this one, are vertical and therefore they are equal to each other. Now, these two sides are equal because CM is a median. So what do we have? We have triangle CMB and AMD. They have sides and angle between them. So in this case, we can use this theorem, which means triangle C. M, B. Uh, I, I will use equal instead of congruent. Uh, in, in my view, they're supposed to be basically equivalent. I know that there is some difference, but uh, I don't think it's essential. It's equal to uh, D, triangle D, M, A. D, M, A and C, M, B. These two triangles, these two, are equal or congruent to each other by sides and angle between them angles are vertical okay great now what do we have well we have from equal in equal triangles uh, opposite to equal sides there are equal angles right so this angle should be equal to this one but this one is equal to this because it's an angle bisector. So we have triangle CAD, triangle CAD, with two equal angles. And in the triangle, from two different and opposite to two, two, two equal angles, there are equal sides. So triangle is isosceles. CAD is isosceles because these angles are the same. By the way, if you forgot how to prove that, think about this. It's a very simple uh, proof. Which means this is equal to this. Okay, but this is equal to this in turn. Right? Because, again, uh, opposite to equal angles in these two triangles, there are equal sides, which means since this is equal to this and this is equal to this, therefore these two sides are equal to each other and the triangle is is also. So what's creative about the whole thing? Creative is that we have uh, extended this line CM to the same distance, so CM is equal to MG. Uh, constructed this triangle, proven that this triangle and this triangle are congruent, and from this we had uh, angles are the same, and therefore sides are the same. Uh, CAD is a isosceles, so if these two sides are the same and these two sides are the same, then these two are the same. Okay, that's number two. Number C is a little bit more unusual, I would say. Let's say you have uh, inside-sided convex polygon. Now, first of all, uh, what is convex polygon? There are different equivalent definitions. One of the definitions, for example, is that all uh, 
inner angles are less than 180 degree, less than pi. Another definition is that from any point you can connect this point to all the vertices, basically to all the points of the whole polygon and the uh, connecting segment would be inside the polygon. So between two points of the convex figures, so let's say this point and this point, if you put the line it will be completely inside the polygon. So, and that's basically a more general definition, not only about polygons, but about any geometric figure, um, closed geometric uh, figure on the plane. It's convex if two points can be inside or on the border s uh, connected with a segment and the segment would be completely inside. So any closed line will divide the uh, plane into two parts, inside and outside. So whatever is inside, and I'm talking about non-self uh, intersecting lines closed but without self-intersecting inside outside so if any two points can be connected with a line completely inside this is a convex so let's assume we have a convex polygon so my question is let's just put all the different diagonals all the possible diagonals and let's just assume that no diagonals are no three diagonals are intersecting in one point okay okay my question is how many points of intersections are so that's my first question how many intersection points here my second question is you see there are different angles here oh, this is an angle this is an angle this is an angle this is an angle so my question is what's the sum of all these angles well to tell you the truth when I first saw this problem I was kind of puzzled I mean it's not easy to basically kind of approach this problem so in this case, I suggest you to uh, pause the video and think about yourself. So let's start first with the number of intersections. How can we calculate this number of intersections? Well, apparently it's not really very difficult because any intersection, let's say this, uh, is formed by two diagonals from four different points. So if you take any four points, let's say this point, uh, I'm talking about vertices, this, 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 and this. So this is a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral, this is a diagonal, and this is a diagonal, and this is a point of intersection. So any quadrilateral which can be formed from these in this case six uh, vertices of the polygon would generate one intersection point. So if you take any four vertices and draw two diagonals, any four vertices and draw two diagonals, you will have an uh, intersection which means that number of intersection is basically a combinatorial problem how many different groups of four points I can choose from n given so if you have n points given and if you remember the course of combinatorics which I do present at the uh, mass routines course as a prerequisite, so I'll just use the formula. If you don't know the formula, go back to any textbook or my lectures in Mass 14 on combinatorics. Number of times you can pick 4 out of n is 
n factorial divided by 4 factorial times n minus 4 factorial. Remember, factorial is right? 1 times 2 times 3 times etc. times n. Now, let's call it lowercase n. So this is the number of intersections. Okay, great. So now the next problem is how much, uh, what, what's the sum of all the angles which are formed by all these. Now, angles are either inside between two diagonals, and we can summarize that sum of these is 360 degrees, which is 2 pi in radians, right? Plus angles at every uh, vertex. Now, but we don't know sum of these and sum of these. Sum of these is 2 pi times n. 2 pi times lowercase n. Because every point of intersection gives me sum of angles 360 degree, or 2 pi radians. Now, sum of all the inside angles in a polygon is, well, I hope you remember, it's uh, n minus 2 times 180 degree. Now, do you remember why? Well, let me just remind you. If you have any polygon, take any point. I'm talking about convex polygon. Every triangle is 180 degrees or pi radians, right? So if you will combine all these angles, you will have n times pi. But you shouldn't really count all this, this which is 360 degrees, which is 2 pi. So minus 2 pi. So sum of all the angles, inner angles of a polygon is always n minus 2 times pi. So if you will add them together, you will have an answer. That's sum of all the angles. Now, in one of the future lectures, I will use this result to calculate how many different areas I have if I put all the diagonals, if I have some how many different areas I have. Now that's a little bit more practical problem, if you wish, because sum of all angles, I don't see it as a practical problem, but by how many different domains I will divide a polygon if I will put all the diagonals, that, that seems to be really kind of a nice geometric problem. And I can solve it using this in one of the future lectures. Okay. That's basically it. So what I suggest you to do is read the notes for this lecture. Don't read the solution even if I put it there. There are some hints, maybe. Um, you can use it or you don't use it. Up to you, basically. And try to solve the problems yourself. <coughs> the whole thing actually makes sense only if you solve problems yourself. Now, whatever solutions you already have, they should really contribute to your repertoire of your approaches, your techniques, how to solve problems. And that's what's very important. Then, if you will master all these unorthodox problems, in real life, you will have the problems as well. Some problems which nobody else solved before you. And you will be prepared to think about these problems creatively and come up with your own solutions. That's the whole purpose of this course called mass plus and problems. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>